I'm Tim and this is Tim B at C. So today we're doing an assist job in the kills. We do assist jobs for... Uh, there's a number of different reasons why you'd order an assist. Most common, it seems for us, is usually when the orders get pushed back or there's a delay or something like that and you actually miss the tide. Usually in the kills here we usually like to use the tide to help us, but sometimes it can... Uh, we miss the tide. And in this case, the tide is actually ebbing. So in other words, this guy called because he knew he was released from where he was before at a ship too late, and uh, he missed the end of the flood tide, which would have pushed him onto the dock. So he's coming around here, and he knows that with the ebb tide, the tide's going to be coming right at us, the way we're pointed right now, the camera is. So he, he requested that uh, he get an assist tug, and dispatch calls me up and says, Hey, can you give this guy a hand? I said, Sure. So we go over there, and uh, we don't need a line on this particular job because all we're doing is holding him up against the, uh, the ebb tide. So in other words, as he comes around the corner to the dock here, he's going to be falling down, and he needs me to push him up against, you know, to counteract the, what the tide is doing. So uh, instead of taking, it, taking me up in the bow, he takes me further back towards the stern of the barge and the reason why he does this is that the bow is going to have less of an effect of the tide because it's going to be further into the slip where the mo the the tide increases in speed the further out in the channel it goes and uh, also because the barge isn't um, going to be as affected by the tide as much as the tug will so when the tug gets perpendicular to the way of the tide, the tug's going to act as a big rudder or big underwater sail to grab all that tide and be pushed from left to right. So that's why he has me as far back as I can get, and uh, we start moving around there. So he calls me in, and uh, we start rotating around. You can see that's that big white thing there in the corner is actually the uh, eastmost cell of the ship dock at this particular uh, tank farm. So uh, up, a, up on the corner there, his, his AB is calling him around the end of the dock there. That's the dock that we're going into. So he's setting up real nice here, and we're laying alongside him. Probably hasn't given us a command. He's probably just having us just uh, ride with him right now. And then once he makes the turn, remember, as he brings the bow to the left, the stern is even without any tide. As the bow goes to the left, the stern is going to want to rotate to the right. And so he's probably going to go up about halfway up the dock where the pivot point is, or at least a third of the way back anyway. And then when he starts to make the turn, um, he might have me come in working on him, or he might uh, do it to lift off the stern a little bit. And then if he gets into trouble, he'll ask me for help. You may have heard me say in other videos that sometimes it's just a big help just having another boat there. Even without a line or even without pushing, just the weight of the boat slows everything down a little bit. So right about now, I'm guessing that he's probably having me work on one engine right now. So he'd call that clutch on one, meaning that it's minimal power on one engine. And I'm trying to hold position to do that. Now one of the dangers here is that as he comes ahead, there are different pads, or what we call cells, that stick out that have fenders on them. And if we don't come in flat and he goes before, you know, if he doesn't land directly on a cell, the bow could dip in a little bit and if he has any forward movement, it could catch the cell and rip it off. So we have to either land on a cell or he has to stop and uh, get flat. Okay, so once again, that 
square white thing in the upper left hand corner that's part of the other dock so that that has nothing to do with us so this is the barge dock over here and he's moving ahead and this particular dock he has to get right up to the bulkhead so his bow has to be just within I don't know 15 20 feet of the bulkhead and that seems like a a lot of distance but when you're looking at 400 foot a unit here uh, it comes up on you pretty quick <laughs> but he did a great job so like I say once he gets where he wants to go he'll probably uh, get everything all settled down and he works on flattening the barge out and that's where he'll start having me start to work on him uh, maybe a little harder maybe a little softer and he's trying to get the barge to go sideways so it's that would sound like that's a relatively easy thing to do but remember that there's a, a lot of water coming from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen and most of it is getting caught on the hull and keel of the tugboat so the back end of the barge wants to go out and the front end of the barge wants to go in so it's he's kind of playing a balancing act here so he gets it slowed down and has us slowly work on it. Captain Steve does a great job here doing that. Now I was saying before that there are uh, many different reasons why somebody would ask for an assist. Like I say in this particular case, in most of the cases that we have, it's usually because we're we're for scheduling reasons or because of a delay or something like that. Uh, we've missed the tide we can't use the tide as the assist but there are other reasons too uh, some docks have mandated assist work so in other words they don't want you coming in unless you have an assist boat uh, there are other times where uh, there's some unknowns like wind like you might know that the wind is blowing but you don't know um, in this particular case if the wind was blowing say out of the north it could be blowing very hard and then once you got up to the dock, it could go from 40 knots to almost nothing because the wind blows over the top of the tanks. And so that difference, the variation, is something that um, is very hard to work with. And like I say, having a, an assist can not only help you out, can back you off of the dock or push you onto the dock, or in some cases, like I was saying before, just the weight of the tug will slow things down and give you more time to land properly and safely. So you can see there's all kinds of reasons. And sometimes sometimes people will ask for an assist because they're just not comfortable. They're not sure. Uh, maybe they've looked at their tide books and they know that the tide should go at this time, but this is a really tide critical job that we have to do. And maybe they're a little concerned because the wind has been blowing out of a certain direction for a long time and they know that that's going to skew the tides. In other words, if the wind blows one direction, it might push the tides up by a half hour or 40 minutes or even an hour. And if the wind blows the other direction, it might make them a half hour, 40 minutes or even an hour late. So sometimes if you're concerned about that, you might ask for an assist as well. Now, I get a lot of questions in the comments about how much do assist jobs cost and who pays for them and all that. And the... The answer you don't want to hear is the one that I most want to give, and that's that that has nothing to do with my job, and I know no, very little, if anything, about that. Uh, you know, we, we just kind of run the boats. There's a whole office and billing department that uh, schedules, you know, that, that, that bills people, and uh, some, some, some assist work is built into the contract. Others are not. Some of them are jobs that we call free jobs in other words it's uh, our company and our guys and I'm gonna help the guy out and nobody gets charged for that so if we're if we were taking this barge not to a terminal but to uh, one of our own uh, lay births or a mooring or something like that we uh, we wouldn't charge ourselves to help out but and when we're going to other customers um, sometimes it's, it's I, I, I just don't know um, I can speculate that sometimes it's in the cost of the job and sometimes it's not I I really don't know the answer to that uh, as far as how much it costs I've heard all kinds of rumors throughout my career I've heard as little as five hundred dollars as much as five thousand um, dollars so 
where it is in between that, I have no idea. I, 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 I really don't. Um, and and <laughs> quite frankly, I don't want to know. It makes the job easier for me when I can just concentrate on doing what I'm doing and not have to worry about the dollars and cents parts of it. So I apologize to all of you in the comments that uh, were probably wanting to know how much this, this costs and who pays for it. The, the, the real answer is I, I, I really don't know. That's not my department. And, uh, unfortunately, I really don't have a big desire to find out either. Um, but anyway, Captain Steve brought this thing in here. And like I say, the reason why he did this was probably because he was, you know, although I didn't talk to him about this, I can suspect that he probably was released from the ship that he was bringing the barge off late. In other words, they, they got done when they got done, and the tide had already changed. Now, had this been a flood tide, he could have gone up and rolled around onto the dock, and the flood tide would have held him to the dock just like an assist tug would. But because it, the tide was ebbing, the same thing happens, except that all the energy of the tide... And remember, when I say tide, that's what we, we are calling that many of you call current. It's, uh, I think, the correct thing would probably be to call it current but uh, what we in the industry say or at least in these parts of the woods over here we call it the tide so when the the tide is really pulling him off of the dock the entire time and so uh, that's why he probably called for an assist and uh, there's always there's a, there's another thing that I didn't talk about that in the you know a lot of us can do a lot of things that uh, you know they're, they're they're with every industry I don't think tugboats are alone there's always got to be some hot shot or some superstar and uh, I think pilots what do pilots say they say that there there are young are there there are young brave pilots but there are no old brave I don't know so I have, you guys have to help me out there that in the comments but basically the, 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 the guys that took a lot of chances uh, usually don't end up being old pilots is what I'm trying to get at well I think the same is true with, with tug boating um, I'm quite confident that Captain Steve could have made done this whole job and done it by himself and didn't need me and I would say that's probably the case for at least nine out of ten assist jobs that we do or we have have somebody assist us the problem is on that one out of ten times that you can't pull it off and you do damage when you do damage to the barge or the terminal it's usually not a few hundred dollars most of the damage starts at around a hundred thousand dollars so so when a big claim like that happens you're usually if you still have a job you're usually brought before your superiors and uh, in a question of how things went and what your thought process was and I can guarantee you that the first question they're going to ask if you didn't have an assist was why don't you have why didn't you have an assist now some of the tough guys out there say I don't need an assist and to, to be, I agree that there are many times having assist will actually complicate the job more than having you do it on your own. But uh, getting help when you can, for, for an example, I'll be going into a dock, I'm going to do it alone, it's fine, I've done this a million times. Somebody goes by and says, hey Tim, do you want a hand? I'll probably take it only because if anything went wrong and they said you had a boat right there why didn't you take that so I don't know maybe I'm going on a little too long about that but they're still tying this thing up and uh, that's what they, these guys do I think he's released me now and I'm probably you can see I'm drifting away and so as I'm drifting away that probably means that I'm writing in the log and calling in to check out what my next orders are and that sort of thing that's that was a what I'd call a relatively uh, common assist job without a line. Um, if the tide was flooding like max flood, and you wanted to come in here, that would be too much pressure throwing him on the dock. So he might also ask us for an assist, and we would have put up a line. And as he, the tide started setting him on the dock, we'd start backing to slow his 
progress onto the onto the dock so that would slow him down so you um, you use a line to keep you from f falling into the dock and if you you know that's not gonna be an issue in this case he's not gonna fall into the dock because the tides pulling him off the dock he said yeah I don't need a line so just went up there and leaned on him and that was good so now just kind of uh, like I say probably talking to uh, dispatch get my next orders probably just finished up writing in the log and then I think you'll see us oh here comes a boom boat now this is the little boat that comes over from another part of the terminal and they get a boom a boom now some people in sailing will think that the boom is what comes off the mast and they're right about that but this is actually a oil boom or uh, you know it's a it's a big sheet a weighted a weighted sheet that probably lays about two or three feet deep in the water and then almost a foot high and uh, it floats and they tow this around and encapsulate the barge or marry it to the dock so in the event of an oil spill the oil being lighter than water will float on top of the water and it will be contained in that containment boom so that's what the that boom boat does is he comes over once everyone's all tied up and the bar and the tug breaks down from the barge then he'll tow that boom right around and contain uh, the barge and uh, some people say why are some barges boomed in and some aren't it has to do with I guess it's up to the captain of the port's discretion so in other words sometimes uh, New Jersey will have you uh, use a boom and New York won't um, sometimes it goes the other way and many times it has to do with the product too for instance if we were uh, picking up ethanol in a terminal usually they don't boom in ethanol only because it's a uh, it's 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 just moonshine so <laughs> it's kind of like if if it spilled in the water you'd have some drunk fish but anyway on the way back I spot my old buddy Captain Randy Cole he's over here on this big ATB and on the way back to hanging out hiding in my secret hiding spot it's not too much of a secret but <laughs> um, I stop over here and uh, he comes out and I say hi to him real quick he and I worked together at another company for a long time we've been friends for years and I think he watches the channel too so maybe he'll see himself on here <laughs> But anyway, after saying hi to Randy, we're going to go back and hang out and uh, wait for our next job. So I think what I've done here is I've just uh, sped up the video a little bit. And we're off and running. And you'll see us going through what we call the back channel and uh, making our way over to MOT, the Military Ocean Terminal. And uh, I'm just going to shut up now and thank you for watching. Before I shut up, I should say thank you for watching. Uh, this this video and all my videos have been brought to you by uh, our patrons. Uh, a patron is somebody who uh, appreciates the time and effort I put into these and they pledge a couple dollars a month. And uh, for the price of a piece of coffee, a uh, cup of coffee, they might be able to uh, help out the cause and... Uh, and uh, pay for the entertainment they're getting. So, anyway, if uh, you wanna, if you wanna be a patron, head on over to Patreon.com/slash/TimBSC, uh, or you could just uh, like the video, give it a thumbs up, write me a comment, and uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Really appreciate it. You guys take care, and uh, as always, I'll see you on the one. I'm <laughs> sorry.